Hey guys, Matt Finch here, and on today's episode, we have the privilege of hearing from someone I greatly respect and admire. He's going to share his wonderful and inspirational story of overcoming opioid addiction, and you are in for a real treat, and so am I. So let me now present you with our, today's guest, Garrett Gray. Hey Garrett, thanks so much and welcome to the show. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, we're just really excited. I'm so excited for all the listeners today to really hear about your transformative story where you got off a, a opioid addiction. And not only that, but you did what most people don't do is you haven't relapsed now in almost, I think, what, six or seven months. And you've totally turned your life around. You're like a completely different person. So I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'm going to let you tell the listeners what it was about. But why don't you start us off just saying a little bit about yourself before you even get into the opiate addiction? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Garrett Gray. I um, I was raised in a, a small town in, in central Alabama by two wonderful parents. I had a fantastic family. Um, just great examples. I can't stress enough how, how good my childhood environment was. Um, I have one older brother who I absolutely look up to. He's my best friend. We, you know, we get along great. Um, so my childhood was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed high school. I was a decent student. I played sports. I was just a three sport athlete. Um, baseball was my favorite. Um, that's the, that's the sport I excelled in. Uh, I guess I'm kind of leading up to this because my my sophomore year is kind of where things changed for me. And I started hanging around the wrong crowd, and um, you know that's that's where I was introduced to to my first drug, and things started changing for me. Yeah, so sophomore year in high school, everything leading up to then was all good, and that's when you got exposed to probably some peer pressure, every other person you were hanging out with, or at least some of them were using. And then why don't you kind of fast forward now from that, or you could actually talk about what drugs you first started using, but then bring us up to the point where you first tried your first opiate. And also, how did it make you feel? Okay, yeah, man. So it's my 10th grade year. I was introduced to marijuana. A good friend of mine that was on my baseball team told me about it. I didn't really think much about it. I tried it the first time and it never affected me. I didn't feel anything. So, you know, I was like, whatever, you know, I didn't really plan on trying it again. Um, but time went on and I eventually did just because I was hanging out with him, you know, peer pressure, like you said. The next time I tried it, I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with smoking weed just for the next two and a half years of high school. That's just what I did, man. Um, I was still successful in sports and, and still made decent grades, but you know, I became addicted to it. I loved it. And when I could, I I would take a pill every now and then, you know, I just became, became introduced to different things. And my first, <laughs> actually the first time I ever took a Lord tab was during school. I'm, I'm ashamed to say, but a uh, buddy brought one to school and me and two other kids took it in class and a girl actually saw us take it, told the teacher, got back to the principal. Long story short, we barely, we almost got expelled. Um, and that, wow. that again kind of became, you know, people in the town in, in this area knew about it. It became very publicized everybody knew that we got in trouble that Garrett Gray you know Buddy Gray's son my dad again was well loved well respected everybody absolutely loved my dad in this town everybody knew everybody so I kind of had to live up to his reputation sort of or that's the story that I told myself anyway and when this happened I got kicked out for a week I missed a couple games. I just started beating myself up and, and you know, things just started spiraling out of control and, you know, got, got in some bad, bad shape. I just started using more and more and more. Was it 
Was it mostly to cover up the guilt and shame that you felt from feeling at least like you had failed your father or made him look at you in a new certain way? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That That's, you're right on there, man. I, I, my father is my hero. You know, he was, can't talk enough about how much I love my father. Um, so yeah, that's exactly right, man. He, you know, I just beat myself up. I've had a, I struggled with that all my life. You know, I just, I beat myself up too much. Um, I compare myself. I realize now that then I compared myself to my father and my brother a lot. And, you know, I was kind of like the prodigal child, so to speak. And, um, so yeah, man, I just, you know, the more I would beat myself up, the more I would want to use to just escape and, and mask those feelings. So you didn't feel, so it seems like you're saying you didn't feel adequate enough. You wanted to uh, be in a certain light, but you didn't feel like you were living up to that. So you would use pills and other drugs and that would make you feel even worse, which would make you even use more pills and other drugs. And it became this kind of vicious cycle that once you're stuck in it, it's really hard to get out of. Definitely. Yeah, it was a vicious cycle. That's exactly right, man, that I couldn't get out of. When did things, uh, at what age would you say things got super bad to where your opiate addiction was daily um, and it was yeah. kind of your life was centered around, you know, at that point you needed to use them, otherwise you'd go into serious withdrawal symptoms. When did that happen? Right. Okay. So let's see. That was that was probably my freshman year of college, man. I um, so going back to baseball, just let me rewind just a little bit, and it'll lead right into that. My my senior year, I I thought that I was gonna get a scholarship. I had a couple offers from junior colleges, didn't take them. I had a good Division two school that offered me a little bit, but I didn't think it was enough, so I didn't take it, and I ended up not getting an offer at all. So when that happened, I was kind of bummed out. I ended up, I was burnt out on baseball, ended up going to a school two hours away, didn't know anybody down there just to kind of get away, you know. And I met, I, I ended up befriending this this kid. He was a good guy, but he, again, he was just with, with the wrong crowd and he had access to lore tabs. And that is the first time that I really started taking them. And, you know, we we did some bad stuff, man. I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, but he, you know, we, we did things that I'm not proud of, and, and we started taking them every day. Every day we could get them. If I had money, I was buying pills. That's just what we did. Do you feel comfortable sharing with the listeners what some of the things that you did that you're ashamed of? If not, yeah, that's if yeah, not, that's I, totally cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, I do. And and let and now that you say that, let me let me be clear on to all the listeners on just how hard this is for me to open up about. Um, I'm a business owner. I own a couple businesses, and I'll, I'll be honest, I almost didn't do this interview with Matt because I don't want to lose my my customers and my employees because. I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I've been good at hiding a lot of this stuff and I don't think, you know, a lot of people don't know what I've been through, but, you know, I've thought about it, prayed about it a lot. And I just feel like from the bottom of my heart, man, that this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to tell my story so people can connect and that I can hopefully encourage somebody that's going through this and give them hope. That's, that's my goal, man. It's just. I love it. I know this is hard. I know this is hard, but man, that's that's just amazing that you've yeah. come to this conclusion that uh, this really feels like the right thing to do for you. So thank you for sharing this. Yeah, no problem. So the thing that came to mind, man, is we ended up, man, we robbed his dad's, uh, basically broke into his dad's office. I don't even remember where he worked. It was some kind of insurance agency. But we broke into to I, he did it. I was with him though, so I mean we did it. And because he had a bunch of pills, this guy told me that he had a bunch of pills there. We broke in and grabbed them. Mm-hmm. You know, just and then that just led to other things, man. That I, you know, just 
trying to find money, we'd go into mailboxes, you know, and just do all kind of stuff that's felonies, you know, just super ashamed of. But I mean, I was so deep in the game then, man. I was, you know, led started with Lore Tabs, then Percocets, Oxycontin, Xanax, you name it, Coke. I mean, I, I've done every drug you can think of. Man. I, 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 I'm just saying all this stuff because I want my reader, the listeners, to to understand how deep in this that I was. Yeah, when and when you guys were doing that stuff that you were talking about, uh, was it? I don't think it was to go just because you guys wanted to go get high. It was basically because if you didn't somehow get some type of opiate pills that you were going to go through the horrific opioid withdrawal syndrome. Is that correct? I mean, it's not like we want to get high so bad we're going to go do this. It was more like uh, if you didn't have pills, you were going to go through the most awful physical and mental uh, withdrawal syndrome that most people can't even begin to imagine unless they've been through it. Is that right or was it? Honestly, Matt, at that point, I, I was still kind of early in the opiate uh huh. Uh huh. Um, game or whatever you want to call it, addiction. Uh -huh. That it was just to go get high, man. Like I didn't even think about the the um, you know the withdrawal symptom process. Uh -huh. It was just the 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 joy, you know, of getting high. I just loved the feeling that that pill made me feel. Uh huh. And then gotcha. you know, fast forward another year, I end up getting a, a call from a coach that wanted me to come. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back up. The next year I go to another school because I wanted to play ball. I wanted to try out. This was a junior college. Um, one of the better junior colleges in Alabama. I, 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 my roommate's a ball player. So, so I wanted to walk on. I made it through a couple weeks. I was about to get a scholarship. And while all, while all this is going on, I'm still smoking pot, taking pills, doing everything, right? Nothing's changed there. Um, and man, one of the biggest regrets in my life is I just quit one day. It's the only thing I've ever quit at. I just didn't go back to practice one day. I just said, screw it, the heck with it. And, and, and again, that at that point is really when I started doing all the hard drugs, the coke, you know, constantly had pot and pills, and it just it just kept getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Kept getting worse and worse until eventually you got sick of everything and ended up quitting. So why don't you tell the listeners now? Let's uh, fast forward to about the eight weeks leading up to you quitting and kind of. Uh, what what was the situation then? You know, okay. uh, six six to eight weeks before you quit. What was the situation going on? What was your thought process? What was uh, okay? Yeah, the uh, catalyst for you finally doing this. So I was married, have two children. Um, are we talking about quitting everything altogether, or before I got on Suboxone? Yeah, uh, all everything altogether. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So I ended up getting on Suboxone because that was supposed to, to be the, the, the drug that keeps me off of all the other stuff, the Lord tabs. It's something that doctors prescribe to you. And let me just be clear to anybody that's on Suboxone, you've got to find a way to get off of it. It's just as bad, just as harmful as any other drug out there. And if you ever have any more questions about that, you can you can email me, I'll give you all my information. But so basically, man, the reason that I got off was to save my marriage and my and my family. It I mean it you know that that is my reason why. Because I was about to lose them. And so what ended up happening was my brother, my brother's wife and my mom and my wife, they all just you know, kind of got together and prayed. Um, she Googled, I don't know exactly what she Googled, it was some type of opiate um, addiction recovery, something along those lines. And your name came up, my man. 
and <laughs> it sure did. And and we she clicked on it and she felt good about it. You know, we're we're big believers in in, in the Lord, and we always pray about uh, big decisions, and and we felt good about it. And so that's what I did. Me and my mom got together and we we hired you. And, and that was the start of a new life for me, Matt. I just, we can go through some of the steps that you, you know, helped me out with. But for me, it was, it was all about saving my marriage. I knew that I had to stop or my life was going to be crap and I was going to lose absolutely everything. I didn't want to. I mean, like, I, I, maybe that's, sounds bad like i didn't want to stop taking the pills because i loved the way i felt but i knew that i had to yeah the merit your marriage and family was more important to you than you had to choose between both of them basically it was like you can either stay on suboxone and not have your family or you can get off suboxone and still have your family right so it was you know some people don't make the same decision that you did so i totally just honor you for that and you've made such an incredible transformation so first before we go into how you transformed why don't you just tell us about like the first three to four weeks maybe even five weeks like how were you feeling when you first I mean and did you let them know if you tapered off or came off cold turkey I know you probably haven't thought about that in a while but uh, I think it'd be really cool for you to just kind of say just how how that first four weeks maybe was six weeks and yeah so we we did the research on it and 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 all the research uh, suggests that you should taper off slowly i believe i was taking i don't know 16 milligrams i think it was of subox and i can't remember what one of those little strips were i think it was eight milligrams. i was taking two of them a day um but I'm hard headed man. And if I, I knew that I wanted to get off of it and I wanted to do it as fast as possible. So I went from like 16 milligrams to like four milligrams <laughs> and then for a couple days and then, then just basically got off of it completely. And it was horrible. I mean, it was, it was some of the worst pain and just that I've experienced um, for probably, I mean, that first week I laid in bed like all day, every day. And one thing that helped me a lot was just getting warm baths. I got baths cause my muscles and bones would just ache. Like my lower back and legs would just kill me. And, um, but you know, eventually it gets better though. And, you know, it's just all about persistence and sticking with it. If you can get through that first seven to 10 days, then you start having a good day or not even a good day, a good couple of hours here and there where you can sit through a movie and, you know, you can have a couple good conversations with people. And then it just slowly, you start gaining momentum. You know, you start getting a little bit more energy. Um, and you know, obviously supplements is, was key for me and you introduced me to that, getting the right kind of vitamins and supplements to replace, to help your brain function basically, uh, to repair all those damaged cells and, and everything. So yeah, but the, the first two weeks was, was awful, man. Yeah. No, and I remember when I think, you know, you're one of the kind of more rare clients that actually hires me after they've already had a week or longer off of the medicine. So I think I think the first day you and I had that initial consultation, I'm pretty sure it was like somewhere around uh, day nine. Does that sound right? Day nine That's or about, Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, and you were exhausted. You couldn't get happy. You weren't sleeping very good. Oh, uh, you were, you were in, yeah, you were in bad shape. You were basically, uh, and I'll quote you, you felt worthless because you couldn't help around the house. You couldn't play yeah. with the kids and it was couldn't That's really it. do much. But yeah, once you started to do all these new habits, these pro recovery habits, I call them, once you started to 
adopt more and more of those and then you started to stack them on top of each other i gotta tell you you progressed more rapidly than probably 99.9 percent of people as far as not just getting off the drugs but also totally changing your your whole life as far as the thoughts that you experience uh the things that you visualize the actions and behaviors that you do the choices that you make your kind of whole identity has shifted so now would be the perfect time to kind of walk us through that process so you know there's lots of information online nowadays on how people can taper how people can detox using uh, withdrawal remedies and how to repair their brain and you know there's becoming so much more information on that but what there's not nearly as much information on is how to really really what i call conquering addiction or my business partner calls it transcending addiction to where you're not still wishing that you were using uh whatever drug that you wanted to where you just literally could care less and you're finally feeling really comfortable in your own skin you've got a vision for your future you're grateful uh and feel blessed and appreciative of all the things you have in your life but there's also another level to reach and you just kind of happily go through the motions to achieve that new thing so you've you've done so well i think you'd be the perfect person so kind of what does that process look like so how, how did you have to shift your thinking i mean what were the things that yeah. you did what were these new habits and how did this process move along sure so after a couple of weeks of going through that <clears throat> um you know coming off the, the pills i you know i started having some good days um and again it was all of your help dude I, i give so much credit to you 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 were such a huge part in this in this for me um, thanks yeah absolutely and i i just encourage those of you that are going through something like this to reach out and find a mentor or a coach that has been through something like this because that for me it doesn't matter it didn't matter when i was when i was on these things it didn't matter what people told me like i couldn't connect with people who hadn't been through it right mm. I, i just couldn't do it but i read your story and and you had been there man and you had overcome it and i just connected with you like i felt so good about you and so i i listened and i did what you asked me to do you know um so after two or three three weeks went by you i think you recommended one of the big changes for me was reading books and and working out and one of the first books that we read or that i read <laughs> was from my man goggins yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if those of you who don't know who David Goggins is, learn about him. He he is the ultimate man's man, Navy SEAL, bad A dude. <laughs> <laughs> just to put it blunt, and so I I started just obsessing over him, man, because his whole outlook on life was that you have to go through suffering in order to achieve greatness. and right. that that just stuck with me man and and so you know on those days where i'd feel sorry about myself and why me what you know why is this happening to me i was able to you know go to youtube and listen to some gog and stuff and he would motivate me you know he 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 encouraged me to do something else to go to the gym to to write down what i wanted to become um you know to to set goals and and i just started obsessing over um reading books and and people that had been there before um another uh, another book that i read was by Darren Hardy the compound effect and it talked about compound effect is basically just doing small things consistently over an extended period of time will lead to to great achievements. And so another thing that I started focusing on and I got this from another Navy SEAL um was doing things that I'm uncomfortable with doing. Mm -hmm. And 
one of the first things was getting a cold shower. And I know that may sound crazy to some, like what does a cold shower do? But if you haven't done it, I encourage you to try it because it's extremely hard. It's one of the hardest things I do in my morning routine. I have a little routine now that I do. And what it does though is you, you're, you're basically training your brain that, that you're in control. Your mind is not in control. You're in control of your mind. And I actually, I, I'm crazy when I get in there. I throw some, some crunk music on <laughs> and just you know, psych myself up. And I talk to myself and I tell myself, tell my mind that you're going to stay there until I tell you that it's okay to leave. You're about to be uncomfortable, but you know, you're going to sit there, kind of treat it like a dog kind of thing. But that's just what I do a lot now is self-talk. Self-talk is absolutely critical for me. Those are, those are some of the few things that really started to shift my, my thinking. Let's see. That's, that's just really amazing. And then it just goes to show that it's really is so much about the mindset. When I was talking before about how people can use the right remedies and uh, they've got good stuff for, to rebuild their brain and all that, you had that, but you also really, really learned that the mindset's so important and, who better to learn from mindset stuff than all these Navy SEALs and especially David Goggins, who I've never met. I've never seen anyone on the planet like him. He's as, he can really motivate you to be a lot harder in the way you think. So, I mean, I just want to honor the most incredible stuff you were doing. You pushed through the pain. You were smart enough to uh, read books and exercise, even though it wasn't comfortable at the beginning, you pushed past your discomfort and those feelings and just really, so at first you didn't want to even do this, but it had to save your marriage. But then what happened was you started to actually want to do it. And so what were some of the other habits? So you had the cold showers and exercise and reading and YouTube videos, lots of personal development stuff and exercise. Uh, what were some other things, habits that you started um, using along the way? Yeah. So um, so in, in reading all these books, a lot of these, you know, game changers, successful people talk a lot about having a morning routine, you know, setting their intentions early in the morning and, and being grateful, grateful, just having an attitude of gratitude when you wake up. So that's probably one of the biggest things, man, is as soon as I wake up now, what I do every morning. I've been doing this for a couple weeks now. And I, as soon as I wake up, not as soon as I stand up, but as soon as my eyes open and I realize that I'm awake, I think of three things that I'm grateful for. It can be anything, you know, the air conditioner, the bed, pillow, whatever. And then I think of three wins, or, or I call them wins, just three things that I accomplished yesterday. And then three things that I want to accomplish today. And that just gets you in the right mindset. And um, and then one thing that I do also, man, is as I say this, uh, it's a prayer that Bear Bryant used to keep in his wallet. And I got it from my father. Um, and I, I don't think I've told the listeners that my father actually passed away uh, last year, a little over a year ago. And... He, again, you know, he was my everything. He was my hero. And this is the quote is, it's powerful. It, it goes like this, it says, this is the beginning of a new day. <clears throat> Sorry, man. Hang on. Yeah. Take your time. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is very important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. For when tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, leaving something in its place. I want it to be a gain, not a loss. Good, not evil. Success, not failure in order that I shall not forget the price I paid for it. And man, when I say that in the morning, 
Wow. It feels every time I say it because I just think about my father and the impact that he had on our community, everybody that he touched. And <laughs> that is my why. You know, they talk about, people talk about in order to, to make significant changes, you have to find your why, your reason why. And my original reason was to save my marriage, like I said earlier. But after three or four weeks, five weeks, where I started actually being able to think clearly and, and started getting back to myself and, you know, by implementing some of these strategies that I'm talking about, I realized another big why was to make my dad proud, man. Hmm. And that's what I always go back to when I have doubt. Because I have, man, I, I just want everybody to know that I've come a long way, but I still think about, you know, how I used to be. And I still have challenges where I don't crave the pills like I used to, but, you know, I still think about it. But anytime I think about it, I'm able to say, you know what, that crap ain't worth it. And mm. my dad would not be proud. You know, I'm, I'm doing it for him now and my, mm. my children and my wife. So... I just encourage everybody to that's going through something like this that you've got to find your why you got to find your vision and the reason or the person that loves you most because there's somebody out there that loves you you know no matter if you come from a, a broken childhood um you know divorced parents whatever the case may be there's somebody in your life I'd be willing to, to bet that loves you and wants the best for you. Do it for them, man. Find your reason why and and start, you know, implementing small steps and you guys can do it. I promise you. That's amazing. I, I absolutely love that. It's, you know, I didn't even find my why in life, my purpose until I was about 32. Uh, so, what I'd like you to um, walk the listeners through, if somebody doesn't know their reasons why, if they don't, you know, maybe they don't know their purpose either in life or even uh, enough of a reason, strong reasons why to get off opioids. How does a person uh, walk us through that process? What is like a step-by-step -step process that they could use to even yeah. start that? Right. Good question. Good question. Um, so what I did, and I learned this from a, a a guy named Dean Graziosi. It's the, one of his books. He's, he's a multiple New York Times best-selling author. But he calls it the seven levels deep exercise. And this is this is how I was able to find my why because I struggled with that, man. And I still do sometimes actually having a clear vision, you know what I mean? And, and of the future, my goals. I've never been a good goal setter, that kind of thing. But when I did this exercise, man, I, I broke down in tears and just felt this unbelievable feeling. And, and the way it works is, is basically you, you, you just ask the question, you know, why do I want this? Whatever it is in your life. Why do I want to be off pills? Why do I want to have a better marriage? Whatever. And you answer it. And, and once you answer it first, for example, why do I want to be off pills? Well, I want to be a better father. Then you ask that question six more times. Why do I want to be a better father? I want to be a better father so I can, you know, be my kid's hero. Well, why do you want to be your kid's hero? And so forth. You do that five more times. And the goal of this exercise, the more you ask that question, it gets harder and harder. It's actually kind of challenging. So if you do it, you need to be alone and try to get yourself in a you know, quiet room where you can really think. What it does is it gets you from thinking in your head to thinking in your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and man, it's just powerful. It, 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 it's like it just clicks when you answer something from your heart and you're like, Shh, wow, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's my reason. And that's right. what it is for me, man. That's, that's how I ended up with my dad. And I just, that's what I focus on now. 
That is truly amazing. Man, highly recommend that one. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go do that. I remember you told you told me about that a while back, but now I really have to do that one. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. Talk about a powerful way to where it takes your mind out of it seven levels deep. It comes to the core of your heart, it sounds like, and soul. Right. Yeah, because I've never been able to find my why. You know, I've always struggled with that because... My dad was a big motivational speaker. He was all about this kind of stuff, personal growth, personal development. So I've heard it my whole life. You know, you gotta have a vision, you gotta find your why. But man, I never I never knew it. I never knew how to do it. And that that exercise just resonated with me, man. I was able to click and find it through doing that. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And then how does your overall uh, like your physical, mental, and spiritual health. What is it like now? What is it? Is it six or seven months or something like that since you got off? Uh, I think it's about seven months. Seven months. So, in comparison, what is your mental, physical, and spiritual health like nowadays compared to what it was like while you're on Suboxone? Oh my goodness, man! Like it's a complete 180. I I, I can't stress how different I am. Like I wake up in the morning now excited for the day, you know, whereas I was waking up in the past and couldn't wait to take my next pill. You know, I was always negative, but now like I just look at life so different and my perspective has just changed. I'm, I'm able to be grateful for the little things and, and experience life, you know, and, God's creation and I, I don't know how else to put it man I'm just uh physically I'm in the some of the best shape that I've ever been in I've I've been working out like a dang obsessed <laughs> <laughs> monster in the gym I've, <laughs> I've lost a couple percent of body fat um, strongest that I've ever been um spiritually spiritually I got I got a long ways to go personally not going to church like I should be, but I have a very, very strong relationship with my Savior. I'm a Christian and I pray to him all the time. Um, so I'm just happy, man. That's that's the best way to put it. I'm just joyful. I have an abundance of energy and I'm living a fulfilled life now. And so many people that get stuck, uh, addicted to opiates, a lot of the times, not all the time, but so much, it's because the pills make them feel happy and energized and confident, makes them feel all these feelings that they weren't feeling at least to that degree before. So it seems like what you're saying is you've been able to rewire your brain and redesign your thinking uh, and your habits, your whole lifestyle and everything to actually make you feel natural joy, natural confidence, natural energy, natural passion, and all this stuff without having to use chemicals to induce that. Exactly, yep. What would you see, if I, if you had to break it down into three things, if you could only have done three of the different things that you did to quit, be it uh, nutrition or exercise or the morning routine, if you had to go back and do it all over again, and you could only pick three things, what would those three things be? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, yeah, questions are going to get I, harder now. I would I would say definitely first is prayer. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm not on here to preach to anybody, but I'm a big believer in, in the Lord. And without him, none of this is possible. So <sighs> prayer is number one. I would say second is the supplements, man, that you, you that you told me to get on because mm-hmm. all this stuff is good that we're talking about doing, working out, reading books, morning routines, write down goals, self-talk, all this stuff is good. But when you're when you know, when you're an addict and you're not yourself, man, you, you don't want to do this kind of stuff. Like it's 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 your brain is just I don't know how all that works, but you're just not yourself, man. And you don't, you don't feel like doing this kind of stuff. So the first thing that you have to do is replace 
you know, those terrible pills and, and drugs that you're putting in your body with supplements and vitamins to to get you back to your normal self. Mm-hmm. So, and then, you, you know, you'll have the the willpower to, to do some of these other things. So that would be the number, the second thing. Um, and I'd say third's probably working out. That for me, that's absolutely critical. Like mentally, I feel so much better after I work out and I'm able to be more productive. Mm-hmm. So, so any type of exercise, running, working out, yoga, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find that with um, <clears throat> with most of the people that make the best recoveries, the fastest and the most transformational uh, recoveries as far as how their body, mind, and spirit is feeling, uh, the thing that most of those people have in common is they get really into working out, such as yourself. So important, as is the supplements and all that stuff you're talking about. So thanks for answering that. I know that's a pretty hard question to just, if you could only use three. But yeah. now I got a third question for you. So what do you want to tell people that are, uh, maybe some of the listeners right now are on Suboxone, or maybe they're on Subutex or Zubsol, or maybe they're on some other type of buprenorphine formulation, and they've been on it for a while, they've been really wanting to get off, but they're just too scared to go through the process. Um, they're, you know, they don't want to feel that, those feelings of discomfort, you know, they don't want to go through that, as you put it, the suffering. So what do you want to tell these people you know, what's your message to them that if they go through some suffering, what's on the other side of that potentially from them? And how do they even begin to get motivated uh, as well as, you know, they can find their why and everything. But what what's another way finding their why that they can get their mental shape, their mindset strong enough to go down this journey that they know there's going to be some discomfort and they're going to have to get through those feelings? What would you tell them? Yeah, so one thing is I think it's absolutely critical if you're really trying to to change and to get off of this, you have to surround yourself with the right crowd. You got to put yourself in the right environment and be around the people who you want to become like. That was absolutely everything for me. I was a I was a follower. I mean, I just was, I was a, I was a chameleon. I could blend into any crowd. And, you know, if, if I was around people drinking, I was going to drink. If I was around people smoking or doing pills, I was going to do it. If I was around successful people talking about business, I was going to do that though. So I, I think that's one, one thing that you definitely have to, have to be aware of. Um, you know, and I just, I just go back to the mind you try to learn as much about the way the mind works. Um, you know, I realized that I had to go through what I went through to be able to help others. And, uh, you know, going back to finding your why, you have to find out why it is that you want to to be able to, to do this. Um, and then obviously, you know, the power of prayer. I can't stress that enough. Rely on the Lord and, and the people that love you the most. That's what I did. Hmm. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Absolutely amazing. What is what are you excited about it now in life? What do you what do you love most about your life and the people in it? Uh, what are you most excited about? What's going on now? Any yeah. plans? plans you have for the future, goals, anything like that. What's exciting uh, and what are you passionate about? Oh man, I got a lot going on right now that I'm excited about. First of all, I got a little daughter that's going to be born in a couple week, couple months. My first daughter, so I'm super stoked about that. Um, let's see, business-wise, you know, um, Subways, they're doing great. Um, I'm slowly getting into the real estate business, trying to get some properties here and there. Uh, let's see. Man, I'm just able to, to enjoy everything, little things more, you know, I'm gonna tr- try to start taking more vacations. Um, my wife's opening up her business. 
and tomorrow actually we, we bought a building and remodeled it for her salon and uh, you know life is just man it's like once you start doing these little things like the, the compound effect that I was talking about once you start implementing some of these, these strategies and doing the things that are uncomfortable it's like the Lord or, or whatever you want to call it the higher power just allows more good things to keep happening for you if that makes sense that's kind of where i'm at in my life like things are just exciting and, and, and they, you know things are going great right now. that's amazing i'm so i'm just so grateful man for you i can't stress that enough um you are such a such a key part of this success that i've had in my life Man, thanks so much. You've been an absolute joy to coach. Absolute pleasure. I can't even. And now we're such good friends and so close after the the coaching ended. And now we'll we'll be best you know besties for life. Now it's so amazing how how all this stuff works out. Like you were just saying, you know, you start doing the right things, you start uh, becoming a better person, and uh, really trying to help and contribute. And then it just seems like a lot of things just start to get better and better in an almost yeah. miraculous way, if not totally miraculous. Uh, right. Last last question, Garrett. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I know for a fact so many people are going to absolutely connect with this and give. you're going to give so many people inspiration, education, as well as some great tools and resources. But last question. So if you were to stop working out, stop praying, stop reading books, stop doing personal development, stop hanging around with the right people, stop using positive self-talk. If you were to, if you were to stop all these new pro recovery habits, do you think you would be uh, go, go ever go back to using opiates if you stopped all these things that you've been doing? No, I don't. I don't, man, because I always would think about my dad. Ah, uh, that's my right. it goes back to your why. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm never going to do it again. Mm. And until you can get to that point, you know, you're going to, you're going to relapse. I've relapsed tons of times. I've been to rehab. I've, you know, I've had a month here and there where I thought that I was done, but I never knew why that I was really trying to quit. <laughs> and until you can really hone in on that that reason why you know you, it's, you still are going to struggle oh man I love that answer because you know that's what happens to so many people they'll get some positive momentum uh, they'll be doing all these new things taking supplements, exercising, eating right doing all sorts of different things whatever it is that particular person does but if they slip up on all that stuff and if life starts to get too stressful, then that goes on for a while. Next thing you know, they're at work the next day and somebody's got some pills during the lunch break and they offer yeah. to share some. It really can happen so fast. So I absolutely love how you have done that seven levels deep. Why? And so now you've made a decision. You've totally, you've raised your standards to this new level to where even if for some, maybe you got an injury or something and you couldn't work out doesn't matter what happens in life. I can tell that this is coming from your absolute heart and soul to its core that you'll never do it again because you're doing this for your dad and you, you know, you, you don't want to ever go down that road again. So it's like, even if the thought comes up in the future, you'll just squash it just like you've been doing if it comes up. That's, a, that's exactly right. So that's important. Exactly right. So Man, all you listeners, I would highly recommend, doesn't matter what drug, what substance you're dependent on, really, really take that into consideration to do that seven levels deep Y exercise uh, because Garrett has figured out this way now to where even if his habits were to slip up a little bit, depending on how life goes, he's just really got this underlying decision that's so much resolve that he won't ever use again. Very, very powerful stuff because it's not just about uh, if you can get off drugs or, or alcohol. It's about whether you can get off, 
uh, live a good life and also stay off long term so you don't have to go through this relapse after relapse like so many of us have done. So Garrett, again, thanks so much for being on the show. I really loved having you as a guest and I can tell that you're gonna have at least some type of career moving forward uh, as a recovery coach or some type of help because I can tell people are gonna be like, oh, I wanna get coached by Garrett because I wanted to get coached. <laughs> I was like, hey, I want you to, I want you to coach me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you saying that, man. I don't know about all that, but I'm just, I just want to tell my story, you know, and uh, just one other thing for all the listeners. I just, I want you guys to all know that, <clears throat> that I've been where you're at and uh, I know what you're going through. Okay. I promise you I do. And, and when you're in that moment, you feel like there's no hope. There's no way to get out of it. But through the things that I've talked about, you can. You got to believe that. Okay. So again, I'm I'm here. If you ever have questions or, or just need somebody to talk to, reach out to me. Because you can do it. 